porta bem. Cláudia, cai do WhatsApp. Ok. Tamam, ok. Evet, herkes çete yazıyor. Demek ki writing sınavlarımız iyi. Bir, bir, bir, bir, bir, bir, iki, orta. Evet, Merhaba. ama şey... Merhabalar. Ama şey siz Merhaba, konuşma, konuşma e, derslere katılmak istiyor musunuz? Çünkü belki sadece IELTS konuşma kulübü de belki yapabiliriz. Çünkü anladığım kadarıyla herkesin de böyle bir problemleri var. Tamam konuş, e, anlıyorum, okuyabiliyorum ama konuşamıyorum genelde problemleri var. Özellikle belki ayat için ayrıca bir e, konuşmada kulübü yapacağız sadece ayat için. Okay. Evet, yani tamam. Zaten öğrencilerin genelde sorun Hı -hı. çektiği şey speaking ve writing oluyor. Biz de işte Hı -hı. onlara bir el atacağız. Tamam. Öğrenciler de faydalı olur diye düşünüyorum. Tamam, okey. Ee, tamam o zaman sen istersen başlayabilirsin. Ee, sunumu da paylaşabilirsin. Hı hı. Ee, o zaman ben sunumu öncelikle yansıtayım. Hemen hı hı. direkt e, bodoslama tabii girmeyelim. Birazcık böyle e, hı, birisi anlama güçlü çekiyorum demiş. Acaba İngilizce, şimdi ben sunumu İngilizce yapacağım. Instruction İngilizce olacak. Ama tabii yeri geldiğinde... Türkçe açıklamalarda yapacağım. Tabi burada sizin kalkıp şey demeniz gerekiyor. Hani Türkçe açıklama özellikle istediğiniz yerde bana söyleyebilirsiniz. Hocam anlamadık. İşte Türkçe açıklama alabilir miydi gibisinden. Evet şimdi sunumu yansıtalım. Önceden aşağıdan şey yapabiliyorduk ama ekranı yansıtma. Evet. Share screen olması gerekiyor gerekiyor. Evet. Bende şu an o yok. Nedense? Ben iki alt kursuna gittim. Seviyem B2 ama henüz alt hazır hissetmiyorum. Anladım. Hmm. Hangi sizce en zor olan e, parça IELTS, IELTS için? Sizce Selina Hanım? Ben konuşabilir miyim Şimdi ama sanıyorum. test evet, çözme evet. yöntemi bilmiyorum. Evet, test çözme yöntemleri oluyor. Okay. Yapamıyor musun? Dinlemek kısmı. Evet, tamam buldum. Ha, tamam, dinlemek kısmı evet. Dinleme de zor. O yüzden bence <gülüyor> dijital yani bilgisayardan IELTS'a e, girerseniz daha iyi olur. Çünkü o zaman ses daha net geliyor. <gülüyor> Ama tabii ki sadece burada evet. değil, sadece seste de değil. O yüzden sizin e, native speaker konuşmalarına da anlat. Hem native speaker hem de e, biliyorsunuz bilgisayardan ses geldiği zaman ve böyle e, yüz yüze konuştuğunuz zaman e, ses ta tabii ki farklı oluyor. Okey. Evet, şimdi ne demiştik? Şimdi bir chat'e bakayım ben. Hı -hı. Şimdi neler demiş. Neler paylaşmışlar. Chat nerede? Chat, chat, chat. Bakalım şuradan gideyim. Hı. Önce bir stop sharing yapacağım. Ve bakacağım chatte nelerdenmiş. İki ay ayarlı kursuna gittim. Belki aslında o zaman benim İngilizce konuşmam sizin için çok da sorun olmaz herhalde. Öyle düşünüyorum. Aksini düşünen var mı acaba? Yok illa Türk diyen çete yazabilirler. Bence direkt İngilizce konuşalım. Ee, ondan sonra anlamayanlar varsa belki. Hmm. Zaten iki kişi İngilizce daha iyi olur. Ben anlarım demiş. Ben o zaman İngilizce başlıyorum. Hı hı. Ee, hem de kulağınız birazcık İngilizce duymuş olur. Ee, bizim writingler için önemli bir e, skill olacak. Bol bol şey yapmamız gerekecek. Dinlememiz gerekecek. İngilizce okumamız gerekecek. Hem bu açıdan da iyi olmuş olur diye düşünüyorum. Evet. Şimdi. Dear friends, today uh, we will take a close look and have an introduction to IELTS writing test uh, which you may know has two separate parts, academic and general training. And first of all, uh, who has ever been 
uh, who has ever taken the IELTS exam and uh, which difficulties did you have during your writing test? Now I will be asking you to participate with your voice and not through chat, please. Does anyone want to share their uh, experience with us? Don't be shy, guys. And my Turkish is also bad. Come on, don't be shy. Turkish. <laughs> okay, let's start with yes, Selina Hanım. Among, among us. <laughs> yeah, Fatma Hanım says that she has uh, never she... been taken the IELTS exam. May I? Yes, of course, please. Uh, actually, I had oh, once, boy. but I had some difficulties the um, procedure of the IELTS test. That's mm -hmm. why I mm -hmm. had the, um, that the hardest part for me was the writing part. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I was sitting at the back of the room. I couldn't <laughs> hear well at that time. That was the hard part, hard part for me also. Okay. Um, so do you, do you yeah. consider to take the uh, computer version this time? Actually... I am not sure about it uh, because I, I am not good at using computers. And if I, I, I always worry about if I have some mistakes at the time, mm -hmm. what should I do and how can I overcome that situation? So I don't know well, but I want to take just paper, just exactly. paper based exam. Yes. Or you can just, when you're going to go to the listening uh, test again, you can just negotiate with the students who are sitting in front, pay them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, means, that can be a really good solution there for is, me. There is always a way, you know. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you, Asmin. Thank you for sharing. Is there anyone else who would like to share the experience? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay, maybe... Since it is just our first lesson, we can uh, slowly uh, ask students to join to our conversation. But meanwhile, we will be explaining, giving some information. Okay? Yeah, of course. Uh, I will also talk about the uh, general difficulties that the students face during the writing exam because uh, we will take a deeper look at it. Uh, so let's start then. Uh, okay. Here we have. Uh, do you see the bar or is it just visible to me? No, no, we do the see the bar it. of the participants. Yeah, we do. See uh, do you see it as well? Okay. Yeah. So uh, you mean the bar or the presentation? Know. No, no, the present. Uh, I mean the bar where uh, where the uh, participants are shown on the left. Do you see it? Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh -huh. This one. Okay. Which one? So that I don't want it to block the uh, text. Oh, okay, okay, yes, yes, yes, we can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first of all, uh, there is a big myth around the writing part of IELTS. Uh, many students consider it as hard and hard to overcome. So we asked the question, is it really that hard? So the writing part of IELTS is which the students find uh, the hardest. Yeah, but is it really that hard? Is it really the case? Uh, so as a matter of fact, uh, in every country of the world, students get a lower band score in the writing section. As you know, uh, IELTS is being assessed in from zero to nine. There are bands. Nine is the best and zero is uh, when the student does not participate in the exam. And uh, compared to other tests like reading, listening, speaking, the students get a lower band score. And as some of you may know, the writing test is conducted often uh, after the listening and reading tests. It comes after listening and reading. So let's move on. However, that's why we are here today together. Uh, with a little bit of dedication and lots of hard work, there is nothing we can't overcome. There are no problems that uh, someone can't overcome with dedication, hard work, and believing in it is also important. You got to believe in yourself first. You have to believe that uh, you're going to pass this exam, then start working. And remember, success 
are granted to those who overcome the difficulties, not to whom who give up because of them. And I want to remind you that, again, if you have any questions, you can ask, you can write uh, on the chat. I will be uh, looking at it a few times during my presentation. Uh, so like in the reading part of IELTS, uh, the writing section has also two different types. What are these types? Do we know them? Does anyone have an idea? Let's make it, guys, okay, an yeah, really interactive really lesson, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, if you could also participate, it will be also easier for us, and we will know uh, what kind of feedback you have, what kind of ideas you have. So we do, we'll do. we really appreciate you joining, okay? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's also important for us because it's a field study for us, too. So we are looking at you and what your level is. Yeah, and we can better help you, you know, yeah, the more practice nice you stuff. have. The more practice you have, the better it's for you. So just use this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, communication is key. So just like in the reading exam, there are two different types of writing according uh, to your purpose of entrance. So what is the purpose of entrance? What do you want to do after you have taken your score of your IELTS exam? For example- We don't see, we to... see on the first page. Are you on the first page? No, no, no, I'm not on the first page. Hold on. We still see the first page. That shouldn't be the case. You only see the first page now. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on just a second. Okay, this is, okay, we see the fourth page now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on the second one. It says, is it really that hard? Is it correct? No, we see there are two types of IELTS writing exams. There are two types of, oh, uh, I think there's a delay in the presentation because mm, maybe it's because of the internet connection. So you are, uh, the slide says now there are two types of uh, writing exams, right? Mm, there are two types of IELTS writing exams, yeah. Okay, perfect. I'll be moving on. I'm on the same page as you. We're on the same page then. Nice. Uh, just like in the reading exam, there are two types of writing. Like I said, it's uh, for the purpose of your entrance. It's important what you want to do after you have taken the exam and taken your score. For example, you want to go uh, to the overseas to a foreign country and you want to live or work there, then uh, it's more suitable to you that you should take the general training IELTS, which is for people who want to live or work abroad. And if you are planning on an academic career overseas, uh, then you're going to take the academic IELTS, which is for those who want to study overseas. So in our, uh, in today's lesson and presentation, we will be talking about the academic IELTS, which is, I think, most important to you. Uh, are there any of you who are going to take the general training IELTS? It is important for us. Uh, I mean, your purpose is important for us so that we can plan the uh, lessons accordingly. So I will be waiting for your responses in the chat. Are there anyone who is going to take the general training IELTS? Or is everyone going to uh, take the academic IELTS? Come on, guys, you all just have to type on the keyboard. It's not that hard. Academic IELTS, perfect. Academic. Yeah, same in there. Uh, I want to ask also, uh, you know, I have told you the difference. So uh, if anyone who is going to take a general training, just let me know. I'm not, sure I'm not sure about, sure about, about it. I want to know. All <laughs> so it depends yeah it depends okay. on your future plans yeah of course uh we will be talking about the general uh training ielts in our second seminar so make sure to tune in for the next one as well uh i think that's it let's move on let's talk about the academic ielts so um the screen changed, right? No. Did the screen change? 
are you on the fourth page if again? you if you want to change the screen at the time you should click the but like the fifth or sixth which one uh, which one do you want to share you should click on it because you haven't started the okay. uh, yes you haven't started that that's why you should click on it yes we can see it right now thank you yes, so uh, it says academic writing right okay perfect. yeah correct mm -hmm. so uh in the academic writing exam so if you have this let's say you have decided you want to go uh, and study overseas have an academic career perfect good choice uh, you can mute Semanur. Semanur, uh, hello. You can point on her Semanur. and then you will put it off. Yeah, you can, you can mute okay. her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I have. A, I have. So uh, let's say you have decided that you want to have your academic career overseas, as we have seen. Many of you want to take the academic uh, IELTS test. And you have to take the academic IELTS one option. So after you have completed uh, your listening and reading tests, you will be presented with a writing test. And you will have 60 minutes to complete the writing exam altogether. And the academic writing test consists of two tasks. The first one being uh, you will be asked to write a descriptive report about the provided visual information or table of data. I will be also giving examples of uh, what kind of uh, visual information you will be provided with to talk about at the first place. Uh, like I said, uh, this can be uh, a map and a bar chart or a line graph or a pie chart, it varies. And it's important here that uh, you should know you have to write at least 150 words. Uh, writing below 150 will result in a penalty, which is bad for you. So just make sure that writing, it's not that hard as well. 150 words are really easy to write. It will take about uh, 10 minutes for you to write 150 words and to come up with those words as well. And the maximum amount of time you should be spending on this part, on the first task, is about for 80 to 20 minutes because uh, time management is also important in IELTS, especially in writing, because you will also spend time writing down your answers uh, therefore, it is important to manage your time. Make sure that you will be only spending from 80 to 20 minutes for this part of the writing exam, because there are also part two, which is which takes much more time. Uh, like we said, uh, okay. Does anyone have a question so far? Are we on the same page? Yeah, guys, most probably you okay, all know this information, but we need to share this because uh, it's our first lesson. So we need to make sure you know all the details from the next at the next lessons. We will go into more tips and more strategies. OK, so just uh, wait for yeah, a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, because uh, not uh, every participant has taken the IELTS exam. Not everyone is on the same page. So uh, we are considering you as uh, students who don't, haven't any uh, taken the IELTS exam at all. So we are starting on the very first page. So I think everyone has understood what I told so far. So I will be moving on. Uh, the slideshow says assessment, right? Mm -hmm. You can see it as well. Yeah. Okay, assessment. Now we will be talking about assessment. Assessment means evaluation. After you have handed out your uh, paper, it will assess and there are some different criteria uh, which is being followed during the assessment of your exam, writing exam, to be exact. Uh, the first one being how well you accomplished to describe the given information, which will be the infographic or data or visual uh, in this case. This one is called task achievement. And in our later lessons, we will be also talking about how you can uh, improve 
uh, your writing so that you have a higher score in task achievement. There are some tips and tricks and some few points that you have to consider during writing. And this point, second criteria is the organizational linking of your ideas on your essay. So what is this? Uh, for example, uh, you're uh, provided with an infographic, you know what it tells, you know how it is, and you are going to write your ideas down. For example, let's take a look at this uh, infographic. What we can see here is the uh, process of uh, the diagram shows how apple juice is produced. So as we can see, there are many stages. Uh, in every stage, uh, there happens something different. So you have analyzed the infographic. You have set your ideas. Now it's time to write them down. Uh, it is important that uh, you organize them well. You uh, present them in a structured way, which is uh, one of the most important parts. Structure is really important. And it is also important how well you link your ideas together. So what does that mean, linking your ideas together? Uh, this is also, uh, by the way, this is called coherence and cohesion. Uh, we will be taking a deep look at what coherence and cohesion is in our upcoming lessons, because this is uh, not only important for IS, it is also important for your uh, future academic life as well. Uh, you will most likely be asked to write dozens of essays during your academic career, and uh, coherence and cohesion is important, like I said. So, uh, you have set your ideas, you begin to write them down, you have a bunch of ideas, uh, you have to link them together. We will be talking about them uh, in the future presentation, future parts of the, this presentation as well. Uh, but I will be moving on quick. Uh, the third one is re lexical resource, which is the range of vocabulary that you use and the accuracy and appropriateness of the words. So what does that mean? Uh, accuracy, you may know, means uh, using the right word with uh, the right meaning. And appropriateness is, for example, uh, you will be asked to write in the academic style during the writing exam. And uh, appropriateness means that you have to have a formal language. Mm. Is he muted? Okay, perfect. So uh, lexical resource means the range of vocabulary that you use. So it is important for you to use as many vocabulary and as different vocabulary as possible. And uh, you have to make sure that you use them correctly. Uh, and the appropriateness is, like I said, uh, you are going to write in a formal way. For example, you can start your uh, writing with, hey, what's up? You can't do that because it's a formal exam. You have to write in the academic style. And this, uh, hey, what's up, does not have a place in uh, the writing part of IELTS, let's say. Uh, and the fourth one is grammatical range and accuracy. Grammar is the uh, nightmare of Turkish English learning students, as you may know. Uh, but it is also an important part in the writing part of the IELTS, because you have to know uh, what type of grammatical structure you are going to be uh, going to use for your writing. For example, in the uh, general uh, general training IELTS, uh, you are asked in the first part of it, you are asked to write a letter in English. And uh, as you may know, as you can guess, letters have may contain many different uh, structures of grammar. Therefore, it is important that you are capable of using a uh, different variety of grammatical structures. Uh, Let's look at the chat. No one has questions, right? Do you have anything to ask or any questions so far? 
No one? Perfect. We can move on. So in the first part of the academic writing, uh, like I said, you will be presented with some infographics, info cards, maps, di diagrams, bar charts, and so on. And we will be taking a deeper look at them. Now, in the first uh, picture, we can see a diagram. Uh, like I said, it shows the how Apple is produced, the process of it. For example, in stage one, harvesting and selecting the best apples. Stage two, brushing and sorting. Stage three, it goes to the apple grinder. And stage four, to the pressing machine, and so on. So uh, what you're going to do is you have to analyze the uh, first. First, you got to analyze these stages what's happening in each stage and write them down accordingly we will be talking about that later on as well and in the second one in the second picture you can see a bar chart which talks about fiction book sales i i'm just showing them for uh, so that it can uh, you can visualize it in your minds as well and in the third one we can see a table classic everybody knows what it is and in the fourth one this is a line graph i will be also uh, showing you how to read them in the upcoming lessons not today but in the upcoming lessons i will be showing how to read through the lines how you can interpret it and so on uh, and the last one is pie chart you all know it what it is uh, for example, we can take a deeper look at it. Uh, this is an authentic question from IELTS exam. Uh, like it, it also says you should spend 20 minutes on this task. Uh, the pie chart below shows the online shopping sales for retail sectors in New Zealand 2003 and 2013. So the question is you have to summarize this information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons between them. So what you're gonna do is take the 2003 part, and uh, the one that is 10 years later, and compare them, compare the main features. We will be taking, deeper, we will be taking a deeper look at them uh, later on. So let's come at the tips and tricks for the first task of academic writing. So the first one being, you have to make sure that you use an academic language for your essay. I have emphasized this before as well. Academic language is a formal language. Uh, it is always uh, a good point when the examiner uh, reads through your paper. And for example, don't start your introduction paragraph with the chart shows us that. This is not an academic language, it's informal. Uh, what we can do is, uh, for example, the uh, chart provides us with the information that dot dot dot. You can fill in the gap, or you, you shouldn't say here we can see. Here we can see. I I, I have told it to you. This is uh, not a formal language, uh, and it doesn't have any place in the academic style of writing. The second tip is identify the key features of the chart or graph that you're provided with. So what does that mean? Let's go back to the picture that we have seen before. Uh, the key features, for example, in the second one, fiction book sales in America, I guess. Uh, the key features of this line graph is, for example, the highest selling point, the lowest selling point. Uh, and the gross earnings of them and the categories, for example, young adult, classics, mystery. You have to identify these key features so that you can write them down uh, accordingly. And yeah, therefore, uh, it's an essential, it is very essential to achieving a good grade in the task achievement part, like uh, we have talked about in the assessment section for example uh, you should look at the highest and lowest categories and the differences between them like i said and the third one is paragraphing paragraphing is uh, the gloss and glimmer of your writing task uh, 
what does that mean? Uh, you have to make sure that your structure, your paragraph, according to the academic style. The examiner will look at your paper and to hand it out. And the general structure and the general looks of your essay uh, will have an important place during your evaluation. For example, I have my notes here. I can show them to you. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, but I haven't written them on an academic style. I just wrote down a bunch of words. I didn't use any linkers. Uh, I didn't write an introduction paragraph uh, or a conclusion paragraph. Uh, in the academic style, you have to have an introduction and a conclusion and present your ideas with examples, support your uh, ideas with examples. I will be showing them in our future lessons as well. But like I said, today we will be uh, keeping it short, giving you general information about the writing part. Uh, let's look at some more tips and tricks. You are on the same page with me, right? You can see it as well. Are there any yeah. problems? More tips and tricks? Yeah, but they're asking to zoom it. It says more tips and tricks, right? I can't understand. Can you repeat, please? Yes, I'm saying like, can you please zoom in? Uh, so they can, because they can have to uh, get the text a little bit uh, small. No, no, zoom it was in. just right before because you were just zooming out, but right now it's okay. Okay, All perfect. right. Perfect. Okay, I'll be moving on. So the fourth tip is benefiting from linking devices. So what are linking devices? There are uh, words such as since, before, uh, because of, and first like that. You will need to show the examiner a good range of linking devices that connect and compare information throughout your essay. It is also important to bear in mind that the coherence is uh, coherence as well. So if you are using linking devices, uh, your uh, text will be coherent automatically. For example, let's say you have two relevant information, like uh, let's say USA is the greatest fruit exporter in the world and USA's recent trading results are good. These are two separate sentences. You shouldn't present these as, uh, you shouldn't present these separately. It is best to link them together uh, as follows, since USA is the greatest fruit exporter in the world, their recent trading results are very good. So we have two relevant information. They are relevant to each other. We have to link them together. You can uh, see this as a chain. So they are uh, interchanged uh, together. You should present them with using linkers. Uh, this is also a good indication of how profound you are in the English language. It's also a plus point, a good point. Okay, let's move on. And the fifth one is there are different linkers for different types of sentences. Uh, like I said, we'll be taking a deeper look at them in our upcoming lessons. This is just keeping it short. So let's move on to the second task. You can see it as well, right? You're on the same page. Yes, we are. Is it okay right now? Okay, perfect. In the second part of the writing test, you will be expected to write an academic style essay on an everyday topic. This can be about the environment, health, education, economy, or things like that. But I don't think that they will be asked uh, having any questions about the economy during this time. Uh, yeah, the key parts of the second task is you will have you will have to write at least 250 words. And again, if you are below the minimum word count, uh, it will result in a penalty. And the maximum time that you should be spending on it will is 38 to 40 minutes. Uh, my personal advice is that you should. Uh, spend 35 minutes writing down and the uh, other five minutes should be uh, allocated to checking your written essay. 
And the third one is it is important that your essay is in line with the academic style writing. Again, like we said, you are going to take the academic IELTS and it should be in line with the academic style writing. So in contrast to task number one, you will have to, uh, like we said, write 250 words. And one of the most important points to consider uh, while writing is that your essay should also be in structure uh, because you will have more words than the first task, 250 words. It may be difficult for some to write down, but uh, it takes also a lot of place on the page. So it is important that you structure them uh, as well. Uh, let me take this to the side. And let's talk about assessment. Uh, the assessment is almost the same with the first task. The evaluation criteria is the same. Uh, how well you respond to the question. We will be taking at uh, example questions uh, on the next slide. Uh, the organization and linking of your ideas, the range of vocabulary, and the range of grammatical structures that you use. Or your writing. Uh, so, tips and tricks for writing. Task number two. Uh, for the introduction paragraph, as you may know, you have to write, start with an introduction paragraph. And for it, you can start your essay with paraphrasing the question. Attention here, uh, I don't say copy and pasting it, paraphrasing. Some of you may or may not know paraphrasing uh, doesn't mean just copy paste the question. Paraphrasing is uh, expressing uh, something in a different way, the same thing in a different way. Let's look at an example. Uh, for example, if the question says, one of the major problems that the world faces today is the growing number of refugees. Some say developed countries should tackle this problem by taking more refugees. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Uh, this can be a good question in the second part of writing. So uh, let's take a look at the paraphrased version of the question. Uh, and it goes like, a major issue in the world recently is the increasing number of refugees. Many believe that developed countries ought to deal with this problem by accepting more refugees. So as we can see, uh, we started our introduction paragraph with paraphrasing the question it's an easy shot and you can store, score a good points by effortlessly let's say it doesn't take much effort you just have to write the question down in a different way with different words and maybe in a different grammatical structure let's say yeah, so collocations again can I add some things here? Yeah, of course. Of course. Go on. Uh, so for the paraphrasing, I think uh, before understanding what's paraphrasing, you know, how to do it, maybe, for example, uh, we can we can also we can also uh, recommend students to find the synonyms of the words. So for example, what are the, what is the synonym of the word uh, problem? So what is the synonym in the paraphrase uh, sentence? It is issue, right? So like in order to paraphrase, yeah, of course. you need to know the synonym. So first you find that like, huh, look, I know the synonym of this word, so maybe I can paraphrase it in a uh, in a different in, in that way in the, in in the in my sentence, you know. So in order to paraphrase, mm -hmm. it's really important to know the synonym. I just wanted to add this, I think. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, that's a good information. Thank you. Uh like uh, Mrs. Tinara said, uh, you can look at the question, identify the words that you know the synonym of, and use them at the paraphrase sentence. It's an easy shot, like we said. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, there are also some other tips and tricks, uh, but we will be talking about them in the further upcoming lessons. So, uh, collocations, like we said, they are very important. Uh, I have studied English language teaching and we had a teacher that was obsessed with collocations. We studied them for about two years. Uh, he always said that they're important. They show how profound you are in English. 
uh, it's always a good way to express yourself with different words and stuff. So they are very important, like he also said. Uh, they show the examiner that you are profound of the English language. So what are collocations? Uh, by the way, they also have a positive impact on the flow. Of the so it flows right through the words and sentences. So what are collocations exactly? Collocations are two words that always go together, hand in hand. They can't be separated. For example, the term making the bet. What does it mean? Can someone give a translation for it? Come on, it's an easy question. Does anyone know making the bet? What does it mean? I think no one. Making the bet means yatal uh, yapmak. You are going to check make that make. So making the bet to make the bet can't be expressed as produce the bet. Make and produce have similar meanings, but uh, we don't say I produced the bet this morning. So uh, make the bet is a collocation. There are other examples. Any examples you can look them up. Uh, for example, makeup, the thing that we put on our face. Uh, we can also we can't also say uh, produce up. You know what I mean. Uh, collocations are very important. Therefore, it must be written as make the bet. So uh, you you should also make sure uh, make sure that you use collocations effectively and wisely. So uh, for example, using collocation does not mean uh, you should always use them. You should have a range and level. You should use them to a certain extent, not too much, not too less. And yeah, we will take a deeper look at how you can improve your writing in the upcoming lessons. Stay tuned for that, let's say. Yeah, that's it for me for today. Uh, in the next lesson, in the next seminar, we will be talking about the general training IELTS, like I said. And I will be talking about coherence and cohesion. This is very important, like I said. And lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. What does these mean? Why are they important? How we can make use of them? And things like that. So this was my part. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I will be handing the word. Uh, by the way, do you have any questions? Um, I uh, have, you have actually. Now plenty of, time to... of course. First of all, thank you for this beautiful presentation. And I will also like ah, to ask you that um, for like mock-up testing ourselves, is Cambridge publications like IELTS publication is enough for mock-up? like um enough as uh, being right like the knowledge and the test types inside of it yeah i think it will be uh, beneficial and efficient for you and cambridge as you know is one of the leading top-notch uh publications and uh, yeah i hi highly advise it to, to make use uh for you to make use of it Thank you. That's what I'm... Yes, huh? Yes, it is. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? Uh, so, I, I would like to ask, like, what is your opinion? What do you think? Do you think there's anything that we should improve? Or, like, what do you generally think? You can, you can say it in Turkish, no problem about that. Just I want to hear your feedback. If you can share with us, it would be great. Okay, I uh, mean uh, feedback for the students or yeah, how they can improve the their writing. My personal if opinion. If you have, if, it, if students have any feedback regarding the lesson, the style of the lesson, do you have any suggestions or ah, okay. do you like it? If you can share with us, it would be great because this is our first experience of making the IELTS free IELTS uh, mm -hmm. lesson to everyone. So we would like to hear your opinion about that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I guess everyone is shy. It's normal when I first joined my uh, Chinese speaking club, even though I do speak Chinese, I was really shy to speak. I don't know why. So I do really understand you guys. Um, 
I also wanted to add that if you guys are willing to add a professional uh, IELTS teaching courses, uh, they will last about three, uh, three months. And um, we will split students over the groups, depending on their level, of course. And uh, Mr. Ferrat, our teacher Ferrat, Hoja Ferrat, Hoja in Turkish, uh, is going to help us for teaching. And also, I've been joining you sometimes for the uh, speaking classes. So, if there's anyone willing to join our English speaking classes, starting from, oh, pardon, sorry, IELTS, IELTS course, uh, you can uh, sign up for the February classes. And we're starting the group in February. Thank you guys for joining again and have yes. a good evening. <laughs> Thank you for that also. Thank you too for participating in the lesson and helping me out, giving some uh, detailed information. Yeah. For everything. Yeah, everyone have a good evening. Bye-bye. Yeah. Good evening. Take bye -bye. care, stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't forget to Uh, recording in progress. Let's stop recording. And then say and then stop sharing. Wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait. Not just end recording. Stop recording. So.